for certain people, adventure runs in the blood. A burning desire for experiences not accessible to just anyone. Voyages of the modern world. Western civilization. Very little was known about the border states of Thailand. To these riders, that is the appeal of this journey to make tracks into the unknown, to forge bonds, man and machine testing their limitations for the sake of a life-changing experience. Am I on the right road? The trail to Ban Loi Tonku is a treacherous one. Was that turning to the right just now? No. So this is the only way, yeah? I guess so. All right. Motorcycles this large pose many challenges, even for experienced riders. You have to go this way. You have to do fast. <laughs> Despite the setbacks, the riders are determined to continue onwards to the elusive border village tucked away in the hills of Thailand. What awaits them there is a place of unique interest. The home to a tribe sparsely documented a sect of the Karen tribe forced from their homes by the Burmese 200 years ago. Almost made it. <laughs> well, well, I managed to cross the river but uh, smoothly, but I was accelerating up the hill and uh, as I reached here, I tried to stop the bike and I hit the rock. Bad luck. Oh, but anyway, we made it across. Yeah, it's quite deep though. Oh, thank God you made it. Good team. I believe that I did it. As part of the right to enter this remote space, one must obtain special permissions from the 347th Border Patrol Police. <laughs> Rangers from the area warn the riders of the steep, dangerous roads they must travel, but offer support should they need assistance. Now he say, for here some slowly, for a lot something, he take care, you know. He take care of him. <laughs> Frequent stops to assess the terrain are necessary for the riders to gauge safe passage for their large motorcycles.
such steep descents can end in disaster without proper care. Road surfaces are very unpredictable. Turning to sand at a moment's notice. Conditions such as this are hazardous, not just to man, but machine also. Numerous falls and accidents continue. These riders are really testing the limits of their vehicles. Locals warn the riders to turn back. The trail gets more treacherous up ahead. After much deliberation, one rider turns back. For the larger motorcycle, a return journey is impossible due to a failed gear sensor. Without the ability to shift gears at all, it soon becomes apparent that assistance is required. There is no choice but to mount the vehicle into a utility truck and continue onto the village. The riders arrive at their destination. Light on cool village. The last frontier. We're pretty lucky we didn't bring our bikes, huh? <laughs> we were the wise ones. <laughs> Tell me, what did you think of it when you were starting off? I was thinking it was maybe doable, but uh, when I see now further with the car, I'm very glad I left the bike behind. Yeah. One more, one more, I didn't know. That's it, that's it. Unsure of the tribe's demeanour, the approach into the village is a time for the guests to ponder if they'll be welcomed or shunned. First contact. The visitors are met with playful curiosity. <laughs> the beast like motorcycle becomes a welcome attraction for the local youth. Much to our guest's surprise, this remote village has unexpected modern comforts. That's electricity. They asked us to tend there, but I said it's here for us to charge all our equipment. Ah, okay, yeah, that's fine, yeah. Yeah, outside the corridor they have lights, they have fan, and they have charger, we can plug in the wall. Great, and where's the Wi Fi they mentioned? Uh, he's gonna give us a password. Fantastic. They have Wi Fi? Yeah.
The locals show their hospitality, bringing catfish for dinner. <laughs> Under the cover of darkness, river prawns are caught for everyone to eat. Entertainment is provided in return to the curious local inhabitants. They watch footage of the riders falling off their big bikes. <laughs> The following morning, it's clear to see that the villagers here have a strong community. With around 3,000 inhabitants, all who are able contribute to help maintain a comfortable living space. No alcohol is consumed here, it is village ordinance. You will see no domesticated pigs or chickens here. Preference goes to the hunting of wild meat for consumption. Vegetation is grown and tended to by the community. As the villagers go about their morning activities, the guests attempt to repair the malfunctioning motorcycle. You have to tighten this later. Mm -hmm. That's for you, right? You don't have this. Once again, drawing the attention of the local youth and a friendly dog. You have the flyer? Yeah. Without the necessary parts needed to complete the repairs, the bike becomes a tool for other purposes. What are you going to do? Maybe not so good. that? Good thing you didn't break your mirror. Kick your ass for that, you know? Mirror, mirror, who's the most beautiful one? Not Goran. Definitely Kim. <laughs> Let's, you see the kid looking at her, it's funny. What's funny, huh? <laughs> this one here, that's this. I'm handsome again. Green one, green. Simple village life is apparent all around. Okay, one, two, three. The guests become involved in the basic pleasures derived from a world mostly disconnected from modernity. Okay. such a remote location, inhabitants must all find a way to help with the maintenance. Basic living conditions mean that ancient techniques are still preferred, 
and preserved. Locally grown crops are individually washed by hand. Small scale family sized border trading exists due to the village residing just two kilometres from an unpatrolled Burmese border. Groceries are exchanged this way. <laughs> Children from Myanmar cross the border to attend Loi Tonku school. Small huts were constructed as living quarters for the cross-border children. For the most part, the people living here are happy. How many of us would think that life continues in this way, in our day and age? It is beautiful to observe. Our adventure seekers find reward, photographing precious moments to preserve the memory of such a unique location. For our adventurers, there was one magnetizing draw to this village. Telashkon Rishi sect of the Karen people. Entering the bamboo village is like stepping into a world of a lost tribe. Completely unique in Thailand and barely known even in Burma. They worship a hermit, a divine Rishi and also an image of the Lord Buddha, carved into ivory tusks. They eat wild animal meat and tie their hair into a definitive top knot. Our two riders explain their views on making this journey to such a sacred place. Well, this is the place where the Korean clan comes to worship and pray every Friday. Well, in basically in this Kadan uh, village, they have three religions. Uh, the enemies, we call them, but uh, here they call in Kadan language, they call it Lati Rusi. They would come and pray on the elephant tusk that you can see behind us. In that hut over there, you could actually see two pairs of elephant tusks, one of which is really a landmark and significant, which is one of the reasons why we came here to see it. Um, according to the villagers here, it's more than 400 years old, it could be 500 or 600 years old. I have a great sense of accomplishment coming here. I've been dreaming for two years to come here and I actually can't believe it. I'm here right now. So I wanted to find out more about this particular sect of people, their culture and these elephant, ivory tusks. These people have a unique culture from what I understand. They've been migrating from Burma. There are not many of them. And they are kind of endangered species in their own right. There is absolutely no easy access to this place. Uh, it's very treacherous road, very steep. You don't see any tourists here. Far corner of the country, we are basically only a couple of kilometers from 
for this border. This was the steepest off-road section that I have ever seen or ridden on. If you have watched Indiana Jones, it's probably the most path that you go through. There are a couple of sections there that I thought we were just going to end up in a ravine. <laughs> it is so tight, it's powdery sand. I cannot imagine how bad it is during the raining season. So I think we picked the perfect time of the year to come. But uh, my advice to anyone interested in this kind of culture, this kind of people, to find out more, please do come check it out. But keep in mind, it is very, very, very difficult access, regardless you're coming with a, a, a four-wheel drive or any other mode of transportation. The most important tradition is to offer a torch of fire in December once a year to pay homage to the revered hermit master. Thanks to the generosity of a few foreign NGOs, the Free Burma Rangers, a local church, a committed team of medics and health workers, and certain sponsors, the villagers have access to a local clinic. This place serves as a lifeline for villages on both sides of the border. Without it, cholera and malaria would have decimated the population. Amazing ingenuity has gone into converting nearby waterfall power into electricity here. Battery. Oh. In another section of town lies a beautiful church overlooking the mountains of Myanmar. Despite most of the village being animist, or believing that all natural things can be host to spirit influences, about 30 families are followers of Christ. This is where they worship. On the previous mention of a nearby waterfall, our guests soon discover a place of magnificence that they did not expect. On display, the mechanical masterpiece that powers the electrical supply for the village. A natural wonder, providing the perfect spot to reflect on the unique adventure they had all embarked on together.
there will come a day for us all when we contemplate the accomplishments of our individual existence. When that time arrives, it will be moments like these. Stories of adventure and experience that define our short time on this earth. Make the most of life. Make life a ride.